from New Orleans, Louisiana. And the title of my thesis is Feeding Your Community from Home. Okay, the community I'm talking about is my community, New Orleans, Louisiana. Some of you all might have been to New Orleans before. If so, you might have been in this area right here. And some of you might have straggled down to this Bourbon Street area. But the area that I'm talking about is right here, the Nightwa area. This is the area that I was born to. And this is early New Orleans, just to get an idea of how we strongly value our community. The problem that I'm addressing is a problem that can only be solved by full community engagement. So we get an idea of what New Orleans should look like. And this is an area not too far from the Nightwa area that was rebuilt. And you get, you get a sense of community. We are a real big outdoor community city where people participate, people engage each other. And you see a little bit more, and then this was the kind of uh, catastrophic accident that happened in, two, well, not accident, but storm that happened in 2005, Hurricane Katrina. And we see how this kind of affected the community. But even after that, as time has gone on, we've been able to rebuild and help restore the community. And that's even a picture of me with my family and my community. So you can understand how we actively engage these spaces, these porch spaces, these outdoor spaces. And this is the Night War community, the Upper Night War to be in particular. This is not like the famous or infamous Lower Night War community, but this is right across from it. And this is a particular block that I decided to study. The reason I decided to study this block was because this was a block right here in the Upper Night War community, which did not receive as much damage as the Lower Night War community did, but it's right here along this major street, North Claiborne Avenue, which goes throughout the, the majority of the city and stretches into the night war. So I wanted this project to be one that I would see that would be in an area that received a lot of traffic so that it would hopefully inspire other parts of the city or people from other places to begin to pick up on these same type of uh, things that I want to place on this block. And this is the major access across the, uh, the uh, bridge right here where you see the canal at. Get some views of the community. As you can see, there's a few gaps inside this community where homes once were. These homes were either destroyed uh, or either they weren't taken care of for so long that the city came in and took these homes down. The problem that I was facing was that the spaces for subsistence farming in <coughs> the communities have become extremely limited due to the rise and fall of population inside of these areas. The city has had times where they've had a large population, they've built a lot of homes for people to live in. And then there have been times when people have left these homes and these homes have gone uh, unattended to, which is why we have those gaps that we see now. And also, the seasonal flooding. Outside of major storms, throughout the year we have flooding that comes through the city. And what it would do is people who have crops or people who are growing something will have the flood season come and then they'll lose their crops, they'll ruin the <coughs> land. And then people will say, well, next year we won't do that again. So systems forming that I mentioned is, it's the practice that we see sometimes in some rural places where people grow and they, they harvest food, they have livestock for their family so that it can provide for them throughout the year. And we see this will be a traditional space. If anyone's familiar with farming, you know you need a lot of space and you can be able to get this to work properly. If you're lucky enough, in this area, you will have a space about this big in between your home. But, oh, and, and this and we can see it. This, this is some pictures of the block that I'm working with. You can kind of see how you have this open line right here. And you can kind of see where you have these homes stacked right next to each other. We don't have that much space at all in between each other. The claim is, though, that there's an architectural solution that can be able to provide subsistence forming and be able to blend it within the building envelope of that community. So I do believe that this space right here does hold some value where we can be able to get this type of system working by the use of vertical forming, which is a technique that takes use of space that simply wouldn't be used right here. You do have windows, you do have some functions right here. But I believe if used correctly, you can be able to get this to uh, have a pretty strong system that will also be able to withstand threat of a seasonal flood. These are the case studies I looked at. And from each case study, I, I grasped one strong idea that I want to be able to try to regenerate inside of my different solutions. This is a group of people inside New Orleans who use the bird farm system. And from this group, I got an idea of, of ingenuity. This is an aeroponic, hydroponic system that are able to grow in these flowers, different types of uh, vegetables or different other things that they're able to grow inside of the city areas where they don't have that much service area on the ground. They actually grow those things above some of the grocery stores that take them right downstairs below. This right here is the shoe rack garden, and from this one, I grasp the idea of practicality. This is something very popular amongst the do-it-yourself community. 
people who have simply have shoe racks uh, inside their homes that they decide to put to another use. They grow inside these things. They're able to move these things from different areas. They're able to uh, easily harvest from these things with very little amount of money input taken. This right here, we had a Vietnamese community that came to New Orleans, and these people, they decided to grow all over, all over the neighborhoods inside around their home, they've been able to grow. And from this, I took creativity. They used the front yard, the backyard, all over, they were uh, growing. This is, I got from the people in a practical action group, which goes and try to help out places that have been severely hit uh, through different uh, issues. In Bangladesh, they get a lot of their food from growing it themselves. They've had to deal with a lot of flooding. What they've been able to do was, they've been able to create this system right here from natural resources inside the community that will actually float. And it will flow throughout this, the flooding season. And what I got from this case study was adaptability. Being able to adapt to the environment around you with using the resources around you. The next group, not that far from where I'm using my study block, was put together uh, the float house, which is inside the lower night ward. And this is a house design with the uh, Brad Pitt Make It, Make It Right Foundation, which is a bunch of architects who all team together to try to be able to put in houses inside this area that would be affordable homes. And what I took from this case study was the idea of action, taking the action the next step forward, seeing how you'd be able to actively be able to embrace the changes that were coming ahead. And so as we begin to look at the block, this is the block that I have, we begin to look at the spaces that I have availability for inside this block. I have large spaces where I once had homes and are now open lots. I have medium spaces, which are some of those spaces that were in between homes. Uh, there may be uh, parking spaces, or maybe uh, a small field on the side of these homes, or maybe a space where they have a shed. And then I have small spaces, which are these even smaller spaces, and some spaces where you don't have that much space at all. So these are the three spaces that I begin to look at. Uh, I use this so I can kind of have a, a, a limit of boundaries that I can work within. And then these are the different ideas I'll be able to come up with. I had, I had a lot of them, but I narrowed it down to my big four. First, elevate. Elevate takes use of space where you don't have that much space at all. This is one of the systems I had in place where you have a small space, where it's, where it's a, essentially a platform that will go above and then would allow people to be able to form above the roof lines of their homes. Next, I have float. I took float from the people in Bangladesh, which uses some of the natural resources around New Orleans, such as bamboo sticks to kind of create a guided post where you would be able to have a garden that would float on something such as styrofoam. So when the threat of flood came, it would simply be able to float and route within those posts. And when the flood went away, it would uh, sink right back down to the ground plane. And then I have road, which kind of works similar to a Ferris wheel, but it, it just takes simply the thought of using that vertical element of that space in between, where you'd be able to grow things that would be able to sit on a carriage, and then you'd be able to roll them as you would need to harvest from them or move them so that certain ones would be able to get more sunlight. And lastly, Rise. Rise was the one that I decided to stick with the most and further develop because it was that one that I felt that took action. It works similar to how the Rise is over work, where it would be able to rise and extend over the, uh, the roof structure of the home. And this would allow people to be able to harvest from it when it was down or just have it down in direct sunlight. And if the sunlight was low in a certain part of the year, they'd be able to have it rise up above, above the home and be able to gather more sunlight from that area. Or if it was threat of a flood coming soon, you'd be able to rise your structure and then be able to come back to it later. And this worked within that medium space. So after, after looking at rise, I'd say rise another step forward. I want to see how I would then be able to do, achieve that thing that I claim within my claim. How we'll be able to combine rise within the building envelope of the home and the community. Track system. And what it would do is it would sit up there using an aeroponic hydroponic system and you would be able to grow from this system and it would be able to sit on your roof. And when you want to harvest from this system, you would allow it to come down on that track system and it would go back down to the ground would be able to be harvested and risen later. And when it was down, it would allow light, air, and all those things to be able to come in throughout the home. As you see from this, this natural lighting diagram, with future uh, buildings, you would be able to design your home so that it would be able to work with their system. So if it was a nice day and you wanted your system to come down and you had a different <coughs> area like this, you would be able to allow that light to come in. So that way, when this window was covered or something because you had it down, you would still be able to get those things. And this is a Rise 2 system that I believe could possibly someday be in New Orleans Nightwood area. Thank you.